go to our presentation our today's topic is uh, intellectual property rights or intellectual property and its emerging trends in the india now friends uh, it's a uh, very important story to learn about the intellectual property right especially in the context of the indian subcontinent uh, well me okay uh so from uh, that perspective uh, we are uh, going for the uh, this topic that is intellectual property rights and uh, emerging trends in the india uh, in fact uh, let us start with the basics of the uh, intellectual property uh, what is the intellectual property what is the concept of the intellectual property and uh, uh, again uh, sorry to say you that someone is asking for the entry this is very problematic okay so uh, what is the intellectual property yeah, that is very important uh, from our point of view to understand now you see the anything whatever you are see uh, in this world that can be classified into the uh, two important part that is tangible and intangible that is tangible and intangible that means the things which can which has the some physical uh, forms or physical existence uh, say for example the cup of the tea so there you can touch the uh, it is having shape it is having color you can describe it you can uh, what we can say that uh, it it is having the dimensions it is having the physical properties it is having the some <coughs> designs and all these things so that is known as tangible property but in this world before the creations of the tangible property physical property or whatever you are seeing in this world the things first emerge in the mind of the man and that uh, you can say the Im imaginations that thinking that creations that innovation will took place the physical shape on this earth so original uh, emerging uh, or you can say the original source of the all these things whatever you are seeing in this world whether it is the science technology sociology or uh, you can say the design arts literatures musics uh, then uh, you can say the any creativity whatever you are able to see in this world uh, new designs of the buildings new designs of the you can say the electronics gadgets so that first emerges in the mind of the uh, you can say the human being or inventor or creators or or, or the scientist or technocrats so this emerge imaginations or this thinking or this you can say the uh, you can say the the process by which the things is created that needs that is that is known as you can say the broad perspective it is it it, it is classified as the intellectual property hum hindi mein jisko bolte hai na baudhik sampada sampada hai us usko hum dekh nahi sakte usko hum touch nahi kar sakte lekin it is there in the mind of the people so uh, that is you can say the, the broader way uh, to look out into the uh, this uh, intellectual property and now if you see uh, the uh, the wordings here that is given by the bruce lehman the commissioners of the patent and trademark in the uh, united state uh, now the only wealth uh, there is in the world is the wealth that comes from the human mind so this is what we you can say is the summary of the uh, all the uh, the concept of the intellectual property that whatever wealth you are able to see in this world that is the wealth that comes from the human mind so whatever you see in your laboratory or you can say the in your uh, uh, science uh, technology or new deep buildings of the designs or new varieties of the seed or new breeds of the bacteria uh, animals or new strains of the bacteria the original source is the human minds and uh, and that is the only wealth in this world whatever wealth you are able to see in this world it is it always comes from the mind so that is the broader perspective of the intellectual property rights now uh, if you look here Uh, you look here in the, uh, the, the another sentence that it seems that only reasonable uh, that the development of such wealth be protected and allowed to grow for holistic welfare of the universe so that is very important it seems now you see you look into the words of the sentence it's very beautiful it will able you are able to gain the concept or depth of the uh, you can say the intellectual property it seems that only reasonable Uh, that the development of such wealth 
be protected and allowed to grow for holistic welfare of the universe so what is the objective the broader objectives of the intellectual property right that it is always reasonable and rational and it must be rational that we should protect such development of the wealth that originate from the human minds that originate from the human brain and if we protect this then definitely uh, the you can say the, this creativity innovation some uh, you can say the uh, the expendi uh, expendition uh, will continue to grow and that will provide the you can say the holistic welfare of the universe or you know, holistic welfare of the human beings or universe uh, uh, that is the you can say the basic output or basic objectives of the uh, intellectual property right now if you look to uh, this very simple sentence what the intellectual property denotes in the in, in the nut cell uh, if you want to uh, see that uh, here nobody has any right to represent his good as a goods of somebody else so this is very beautiful sentence to understand nobody has any rights to represent his good as goods of somebody else and nobody has right to pass off his good as goods of somebody else so this is very simple uh, it uh, looks bit complicated but main aapko ek samjha deta hu ki bhai kisi ka assignment hai hum utha ke pehla page change karke apna laga diya aur teacher ke paas gaye so that is thing to representing the goods of the other or thinkings of the other uh, uh, fault uh, others as a your self creation or another thing aapne kuch banaya hai lekin aap hide karna chahte ho कि भाई मैंने असाइनमेंट बनाया लेकिन मैं टीक सर को नहीं बताऊंगा तो क्या करेंगे हम हम बोलेंगे सर मैंने इसमें से लिखा है इसने ऐसा बनाया है तो बोथ द थिंग्स आर रॉन्ग द क्रिएटिविटी और मस्ट बी रिप्रेजेंटेटेड बाय ओरिजिनल क्रिएटिव क्रिएटर्स और कंट्रीब्यूटर्स और यू कैन से डेवलपर्स सो दैट इज द फंडामेंटल लॉजिक और फंडामेंटल थीम्स ऑफ दिस Uh, intellectual property so i think uh, everybody has got this things so what i am uh, what i wanted to tell you that intellectual property is nothing but whatever things which is uh, originates in the human brain uh, brains uh, that is classified as a intellectual property or that is classified as a wealth and that wealth when uh, took shape on this planet will will able to see that wealth in different different forms so that is the you can say the intellectual property now uh, let's move to the uh, another side slide uh now what is the ip that is uh, that is very very yes now let's go to uh, another slide what is the intellectual property so we have discussed that intellectual property is nothing but the thinkings or new uh, concept or new imaginations or new designs that is that originates from your mind from that develops in your mind and once you develop Uh, uh, convert your thinking thought process into the actions and that that will bring the uh, the existence of the things uh, on physical level so that, so that we become it becomes objective so this is nothing but even the subjective uh, imaginations is converted into the objective imagination so that is the intellectual property right in subjective imagination you cannot quantify you cannot qualify you cannot touch you cannot evaluate uh, or even you cannot you can say the grade it so that is the you can say the uh, the uh, important characteristic of the intellectual property now uh, what is intellectual property now intellectual property is defined as or it, it's a personal property resulting from the creative or inventive work of the individual or group of the individuals or individuals so it's very simple it's a personal property or property of big some groups or some organizations or some institution how it results resulting from the creative and inventive work of the individual or individuals or groups of the individuals so that is very basic definitions of the intellectual property now intellectual property like other types of the property is protected by the several laws and regulations to offer the protections against illegal ownership and usership such set of right is known as intellectual property rights so this is or you can see the brief introduction of our uh, title of the topic first what is the uh, intellectual property that we have discussed then what is intellectual property rights <clears throat> so now this is a property now once the property is there then you must protect it you must 
prevent the misuse you must prevent the misrepresentations of the ownership <coughs> so to uh, protect this we have to formulate the certain laws we have to formulate the certain acts we have to formulate the certain rules and regulations so we have to create the some you can say the legal framework so this legal framework or you can say that this, this set of the rules and regulations which governs the uh, intellectual property they are classified or they are known as intellectual property right so i think it is clear what is intellectual property and what is intellectual property rights <laughs> now let me change this slide okay <laughs> now why we have uh, discussing the intellectual property in the agriculture universities or in the you can say the uh, state agriculture university now you see just before five years or just before you can say the uh, uh, decades nobody was aware about the pattern nobody were uh, were aware about the intellectual property nobody were aware about geographical indications uh, so there was no interest in the public domain but just before or you can say the uh, just last decade or you, you can say the in the last two decades there was a great awareness regarding the intellectual property and that awareness is also very critical in the uh, agriculture sector why what is the reason you see the agriculture sector is the backbone of the india or backbone of the indian economy so whatever inter, uh, and it's it, it's a knowledge based sector it's a knowledge based you can say the industries also uh, so because of these reasons to understand the role of the intellectual property rights in the agriculture is very essential uh, and especially in the global era of the world trade organizations and trade related intellectual property rights it's an international organization which governs the exchange of the knowledge material between two or more countries uh, be uh, in response to the globalizations or liberalizations or you can say the removing the trade barriers between the international community so on the, we are we are running in this era where the whole world is considered the one village and there is no barriers in exchanging uh, the informations or materials or you can say the trading between two countries or any part of the world you can trade so in this globalizations and liberalized world <coughs> the sharing of the knowledge sharing of the technology sharing of the science is very important uh, and to protect your you can say the ownership to protect your inventorship you must learn the intellectual property rights so that is the very important things we we people we agriculture scientists are doing lot more research uh, in in very uh, you can say the innovative fields in very you can say the niche area but uh, uh, the bit we are lacking the some informations on the Uh, intellectual uh, how to protect that research or how to you can say the uh, uh, get the, uh, the register that research and all these things so that is very important for all of us now you see uh, if you look to the uh, uh, genetic resource of the animal livestock resource of the animal in the india you will find a, a huge diversity And that is also true for the our you can say the agriculture sector also because our country if you <coughs> go by uh, length and breadth of our country You, you will have the you can say the a, a, a diversity which you will not find in any part of the world in agriculture sector also in the livestock sector also this is there may be you can say the geographical variation there may be cultural variations there may be environmental variations there may be climatic variations there may be uh, variations in the ethnic practice there may be variations in the you can say the uh, the traditions and culture so Uh, this diversity is very important you see the diversity is the base of the sustainable development in any of the sector not in the agriculture and animal husbandry if there is something uh, diversity is there then you can continue uh, you might have studied the one important sentence that variations is the raw material for the breeder so same is true for here also that diversity and variations in any sectors is a key factor for sustainable development now if you look to the agriculture sectors and livestock sector they are very essential they are core vital part uh, of the nations which provide which have potential which which are potentially contributing and at the same time they are having future potential uh, for the food security livelihood security for utilization of the unsuitable environment for the crop agriculture mitigations of the climatic change emergence of the new disease and market demand so this this much objectives or the, the the 
livestock and agriculture sectors they are, they are the, you can say the very they, they are contributing to the national economies and so uh, you can say the socio economic conditions of the nations uh, to the core sector by you can say the regulating or by contributing towards the food security we want to secure the food for each and every set citizen of the india so who can contrib contribute only and only agriculture and livestock sectors because we cannot uh, manufacture we cannot you can say the uh, synthesize any food product in the laboratory so there our role is very important then livelihood security more than 65 percentage of the pool of the indian populations is associated with the agricultures and livestock sector for generating their livelihood so from that point of view if you consider the uh, employment generations livelihood generation the agricultures and livestock sectors it is contributing to the great extent uh, there is no other sectors <coughs> you can say the uh, it uh, service sector is there good sectors is there uh, professional services like uh, software development all these things they are contributing great to the gdp we agree we, we, we do not deny their claim but uh, as far as livelihood is concerned as far as socio economical upliftment, upliftment is concerned the agriculture and livestock sectors is the backbone of the country and it uh, they will remain uh, the backbone of the country for uh, you can say the years to come then uh, this our agriculture sector has the uh, you can say the potential for the utilization of the on uh, unsuitable environment for the crop mitigations of the climatic change so these are the technologies which is very vital for the growth of the india for the sustainable development of the india so that's why the protecting the intellectual property protecting the new innovations generated in the agriculture and livestock sector uh, protecting the new idea which are emerging from the agriculture and livestock sectors is very critical <clears throat> now say for example you have developed these some new seeds or new breeds or new strains or you can say the <clears throat> some methodology to detect the disease of the plants or disease of the animal but that needs to be protected otherwise in the global era of the trade international trading everybody is uh, you can say the uh, uh, searching something new <clears throat> so if you are not able to protect your idea if you are not able to protect your you can say the uh, innovations technology then definitely uh, it, it it will get misused and your interest or your moral will get down once the your creations or creativity or your innovations is misused so it is very critical uh, and another important thing i have al already told you the with the you can say the establishment of the or uh, be being the member of the uh, wto and trips <coughs> we have to uh, change or we have to we needs to protect our intellectual property in all the sector not only in agriculture and livestock sector but in all the sector uh, let me change the my slide again okay, okay. now uh, if you see uh, the unique breed of the domestic animals uh, we are having the you can see the unique breed of the domestic animals uh, we are having the unique crop varieties we are having unique you can say jamplasms in the agriculture and uh, livestock they have they are having different uh, you can say the heat tolerance uh, capacity they are having the, the some animals are very much uh, you can say the tolerant to the heat they are very much resistance to the parasitic infestations they have ability to survive and produce the milk in the harsh conditions under poor quality of the resource input resources genetic secrets has come, so this is what the you can say the, our our wealth uh, i think uh, you should able to understand what i, I wanted to convey you. this is our wealth our cattle our crop varieties Uh, they have some specific characteristic like they are heat tolerant they are resistance to the parasitic disease they are resistance to the mastitis they are resistance to the bacterial infection uh, at the same time they can produce the milk in very harsh condition now you see summer is running so in most of the exotic breed especially in the jersey and the holstein friesian there is a drop in the milk and uh, milk production uh, only only and only what we can say uh, that the native breeds like kakres then gear they will continue to produce their uh, milk at the same pace or sometimes you may find there is an increase in the uh, milk production so why this happens because of the specific genetic makeup and we should preserve we should protect this germplasm uh, from all the angles at the locally as well as from internationally no no one should claim or no one should use this germplasm uh, Uh, in the you can say the uh, abnormal way or to exploit the technology or to exploit the people so that is that is what i am telling uh, 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 
try to understand you try to explain you that why the the protections of the intellectual property is essential in the uh, livestock as well as the agriculture sector uh, now genes for this uh, this is the you can say the <coughs> this phenotypic characteristic results from the genotypic characteristic so the, the genes are responsible so genes are nothing but the, they are the uh, secret wealth we should identify this secret wealth and we should protect we should have the register we should <coughs> claim our ownership we should claim the ownership of farmers ownership of the particular breeding association <coughs> so that nobody can misuse this genetic resource as elsewhere so in this way uh, you can say the, the in intellectual property rights cover is very essential and it will protect the india from the global threat of the exploitations it will provide the new opportunity of sharing the commercial benefit arising from its resources on the global platform so this is the importance and needs of the uh, you, you can say the uh, intellectual property right now uh, very speedily uh, we will move because this is a very fundamental thing and i will not go de in in depth into the uh, this pattern because already uh, yesterday uh, Dr. Tejal has uh, did a very good lectures and uh, that was the even the in the depth uh, at, uh, level. So we'll see only the superficial <coughs> types of the intellectual property rights. Now intellectual property, it's clear why it is required. It's clear why it is specifically important for the agriculture sector. That is also very clear to you. Now let us see what are the different types of the intellectual property rights. So the different form of the intellectual property rights uh, the first one is the copyrights you keep <coughs> any good good standard book you will find c at the rate uh, that symbol that represent that book is protected by the copyright <coughs> so that is everybody is knowing then trademarks then trade secrets then fourth one is the patent and geographical indication so these are the different forms of the intellectual property right now let us uh, have this few you can say the uh, brief uh, uh, introductory di discussions on the copyrights and trademark so uh, tomorrow's speaker uh, mr pandya is the very you can say the well respected lawyers uh, who is dealing with this copyrights and trademarks and he is a registered uh, trademark attorney uh, at the jamnagar court so uh, he will explain you detail in the copyrights and all these things but let me uh, brief you in the primary now copyright copyright is uh, primarily it is meant for the what you can say uh, that uh, the artistic work the literature work the musical compositions <coughs> the designs the paintings designs of the buildings so all this can be uh, protected by using the intellectual property right that is known as copyright so books <coughs> then you can say the, your uh, compositions musical compositions then software program the codes of the software program so all this can be protected using the uh, this uh, copyright now copyrights it's a, it's offer the protection against the copying adapting issuing renting lending copies to the public or performance in the public and broad broadcasting so it's a very simple what copyright offers it offers protection against the copy if somebody has published the book you cannot publish same book same kind of the word same kind of the title with your name so that we know very well then adapting issuing and renting and lending copies to the public again it is you can say the uh, yes yes let uh, some people are coming late this is okay so uh, you cannot issue the book you cannot uh, even give doing the xerox and supplying this xerox to the friends or to selling this xerox is also a violation of the copyright act so you you, you cannot use it hmm, uh, for in this way performance in the public say for example uh, one movie is released today and if you uh, take the cd and <coughs> you put it uh, in into the uh, theaters or in the auditorium or in university auditorium then definitely it will create the uh, you can say the it, it's a violation of the copyright no doubt it you can use it for the non commercial purpose but with due permissions from the author if you want to do the xerox of the book you must write to the author that i i am mean, a student and my objective to get it photo state is non commercial i want to do the xerox sanket patel please don't say the screen sanket Mr. Sanket, please stop stairs, sharing the screen. Okay.
so this is you can see the copyright then uh, uh, details will be uh, you can see the uh, dealt by the uh, what you can say the uh, tomorrow speaker we are not going into the detail then let's go to the trademark now the trademark it used to identify the slide is not visible eh? hello okay now it's visible okay everything is okay just just a minute just, uh, now i okay 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 thank you thank you for thank you thank you uh, uh, let me tell you uh, the trademarks so what is trademark everybody knows trademarks hmm? uh, every every goods or every objects or every you can say the articles in the market they, it can be represented by some signs some symbols some slogans some signatures or you can say the, some branding identity Hmm? so that is you can say the trademark we, we 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 can see the trademarks of the amazon we can see the trademarks of our you can say the khadigram udyog we can see the trademark of our uh, uh, you can say the uh, this uh, many <coughs> amul then banas so this is trademark so it is what it indicates it is used to identify the source it is used to identify the source source or of or owner of the goods or goods products and service Say for example, logo of the Amul. If it is there on some box, then definitely we are very much sure that it is uh, the uh, goods are from the Amul. And remaining the informations we know <coughs> what is Amul, what it produce, how it produce. <coughs> so in this way, uh, the trademarks is a very symbolic representations which represents the uh, source of the goods or source of the, or it, it indicates about the you can say the informations about the owners now this trademark why the trademark is created what is the requirement trademark create the appellations of the origin it's a ancient history purane samay mein bhi jab log apna ek koi bhi creation karte the say for example uh, pottery if you look into the history of the pattern then you in the chinese and in some uh, greek and roman culture Uh, there is a, you can say the very they 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 are very much uh, powerful in developing these weapons and porcelain uh, glasses and all these thing grow <laughs> grocery and so they used to put their name as a trademark so uh, that that also satisfies the you can say the <coughs> that gives the satisfaction to the creators or inventors or producers at the same time it will appeal you <coughs> It, it gives it 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 appeal you to uh, that this particular item is from particular producer so uh, it, there is nothing to worry in the buy or uh, or you you can worry uh, you, you you can buy it there is nothing nothing to worry to buy it <coughs> because of its very well uh, reputed source so that it, it also causes the marketing appeal uh, uh, for for purchase or for the buying of the uh, products then they also include the any letters <coughs> Or, or, or words or name means trademark may be symbol it may be figure it may be letter it may be words it may be name it may be signature it may be with okay, some digits or some uh, <coughs> brand heading some labels ticket designs shape color anything can be re registered as a trademark so uh, this is you can say the brief <coughs> about the trademark now trade secret yes this is very important to understand Uh, because many times uh, uh, we are not uh, familiar with some words now trade secret now i will i will give the example the, the coca cola and pepsi they are multinational giant companies which are having the you can say the distributions of their product or they are selling their products globally but till the day nobody is able to identify or nobody is able uh, is knowing the exact formulations of the pepsi and coca cola so this is you see since long since more than 50 years or it may be before our birth this they are in the business of the soft drink but even still today we we are not able to we don't know the formulations exact formulations so this is is the you can say the trade secret this is the trade secret there are so many examples of the trade secret but this is very popular <clears throat> now you see what they have arranged just to protect their trade secret <clears throat> they are manufacturing the concentrate concentrate formulations at their own plant outside of the you can say the india they supply this concentrate in very very small bottles one small button uh, bottle concentrate of 100 ml or 200 ml or 500 ml can prepare 1000 liters of the pepsi and coca cola 
so they are simply some supplying the formulations they are not discussing they are not <coughs> you can say the <coughs> preparing formulation here they are simply diluting here so to maintain the trade secret they have innovated their business process this is another example how the business process can be innovated to maintain the intellectual property right some other things are also available you see if you go into the refinery sectors there are specific uh, filters which can filters the sulfur which can sil uh, filter the lead which can filter the some other heavy metals some uh, hydrocarbons which is very dangerous to the human and environmental health so there are some companies some manufacturers in the world that <coughs> they are only and only producing say for example filter for the sulfur they are producing only and only one company that is located in the netherlands nobody has copied it till the date so it is very difficult to maintain the <coughs> secret of the such business process or such business monopoly but still that can be maintained with the help of the legal structure legal framework so now you see the information that can be used in the operations of the business or other enterprise such information should be sufficiently valuable and secret <coughs> that that offers an actual or potential economic advantage over other this include the combinations of the component as we have discussed each processes design and operation now these trade secrets are used to prevent the technology theft so <clears throat> whatever information you feel that it is worth it is it is having the economic value and it is a very great impact on the uh, uh, transactions of the business so that information uh, you can protect it using the trade secret <clears throat> you can take the help of the regulations of the your countries so that information can be protected very effectively and somebody leaks it there are so many provisions <clears throat> the this trade secret to protect the trade secret but uh, you can uh, do it there is no limit <coughs> time limit there is no time limit for the trade secret lifetime you can have the trade secret registered uh, in your countries and that can be protected the protection depends on the means to keep the technology secret <coughs> now the best example is the selection index used by the breeding companies mm -hmm. most of the breeding company especially in the poultry industries pig industries they are breeding the specific animals and with the help of the selections they select the animals based on the selection index so this selection uh, index is very important is very important criteria for selecting the best uh, parent stock and by breeding that parents uh, they are producing the one of the best progeny so they keep this selection index methodology of the selection index then <coughs> all this thing very secretly so this is you can say the about the uh, trade secret then another one is the patent uh, <coughs> yesterday madam has uh, given you the lecture on the patent so i am not going into the details of the patents what is the definitions you know uh, legal monopoly that is granted by the authority or the constitutions of the particular country for regulating <coughs> regulating the regulating the you can say the uh, some regulations so you will get the monopoly granted up to some specific period so this is all uh, madam has told you the criteria <coughs> you see now uh, let me discuss you one important thing it is you can patent anything it is not necessary that uh, uh, for making the patent you need very high fi research technology and all these things even the uh, your salt button or you can patent for syringe you can patent for needle but what it needs it should comply with these three, three important criteria that it should be novelty or it should be no <coughs> you can say the something new and it must have some commercial usefulness or it should it should have public usefulness in the public domain and most important thing is that it should it should be a real invention not a simple extension of existing technology so if anything which fulfills these three criteria then <coughs> uh, you can patent this it is not necessary that uh, only and only uh, the great researcher or you can say doctorate or philosophers or doctorate students or great scientists can do the patent it's not like that uh, <clears throat> even the farmers who don't know the logics uh, or you can say the, the different kinds of the uh, science uh, they can also patent and there are thousands of the patents in the names of the farm if you <clears throat> visit the indian institute of management they are having the one project uh, dr anil gupta uh, they are <coughs> Uh, doing the patent or ipr work on behalf of the farmers so they motivate the farmers uh, to undertake their own technology to adopt their own technology so you go that sishti foundation is there anibi foundation is there there you will find a, a thousands of the patents which is registered in the name of the farmer 
so <clears throat> this is what i want to tell there anything can be patented but <clears throat> it should have some novelty elements of the newness it is useful in the public domain at the same time <clears throat> the some invention it should it should not be the extension of existing thing so suppose you have designed the syringe <coughs> which is having some different mechanism which is having some different usefulness in the public domain and it is having something new technology with new thinking it is environmental friendly it cannot spread the infection uh, it plastic some different material so at a, from that point of view uh, if you look uh, to that uh, then you can patent it so th that is the things what i wanted to tell you now let's go to the next slide uh, yes geographical indications is very important things uh, uh, now this is another type of the intellectual property kal madam ne bataya tha shayad i think basmati rice ke bare mein so the things which belongs to the you can say the uh, the or you can say that it's a common property resource it's not the basmati rice or kakrej kettle or gir kettle or kesar keri or you can say the uh, bhal wheat or some other speciality in our india every state every city has its own speciality and that is that speciality or uh, you cannot claim individually you can you cannot claim the rights intellectual property rights of that particular item individually because it's a it emerges because of the the practice common practices <coughs> common wisdoms of the groups of the farmers or groups of the people or say you can say the hundreds of the years and today we are enjoying <coughs> that particular uh, uh, items with some specific characteristics so that is you can say meaning of the uh, geographical indication let us take the examples of the basmati rice so it does not belongs to any individual farmer it does not belong to this uh, group of the farmer but its result it's it's the results of the you can say the thousands of the year the agriculture practices adopted by the farmers of that particular regions since thousands of the years they and because of that regions uh, today they are able to produce this some agriculture produce with distinct characteristic which can, which which cannot be copied by in any other geographical or any other territorial part of the world so uh, such kind of the pro uh, product can be protected using the geographical indications <clears throat> we'll give the examples of the patola of the pattern mm, that is the kind of the uh, you can say the sari that uh, that is used by the women so uh, that is not individual skill or that is not the skill of the particular family or particular group <coughs> of the uh, society but it's a skill of the entire community it's a common property resource so such product can be protected using the geographical indications now you see the registration certain example the registration of the geographical indications is granted for the period of 10 years and can be reviewed for further period of 10 10 years say for example wheat from the bal area of the gujarat basmati rice then you can have the turmeric <coughs> then desi ghee so all this the, the area specific specialties can be protected using the geographical indication say for example we'll take the example of the tea darjeeling tea so it's uh, gi tag mm, if you are growing the tea in the kerala or karnataka and you are selling it as a darjil tea then it's a uh, violations of the <coughs> geographical indication act you cannot put that gi mark or trademark of the darjiling tea so this is uh, you can say the very important to understand for all of you that this kind of the uh, properties this kind of the agriculture crop this kind of the livestock breeds can be protected using the geographical indications Uh, these are the you can say the bhal uh, wheat apne jana bhal na kahun kahiye je gujarati ma ne hindi mein jo hum bolte hai ki ye specific ek wheat ki variety hai gujarat mein ek specific region hai which is <coughs> very near to the coastal area and uh, they have uh, you can say the, the wheat which 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 are high in the glutens and the roti made from the wheat they have very specific uh, you can say the uh, organoleptic characteristic and because of that reason uh, that bhal wheat has got the <coughs> very uh, high market price but that is only limited to the the crop the wheat produced in the bhal region so our uh, counterpart anand agriculture university has uh, took the initiative uh, for filing the gi applications for the balia wheat and uh, <coughs> our state run gujarat agro industry corporation gi has also uh, helped them uh, to file or to nominate this bhal wheat as a for the geographical indications application so there are you will find so many examples all over the uh, india now uh, these are the some uh, geographical indication already i have told you the darjeeling tea uh, then uh, pithani waves then uh, 
uh, this cambered formic cheese then other you can see the uh, let me someone is coming okay now what are what things you can uh, uh, protect with the with the help of the geographical indication so milk of the chilka buffalo again it is a specialized varieties from originating from specific community or specific uh, territory of this uh, our country then milk product made from the milk of the bunny or darwari buffalo so that is also you can also protect it uh, this with the help of the uh, the geographical indication then ghee made from the milk of the jafarabadi buffalo that is also again uh, jafarabadi buffalo the milk the fat size of the fat globules is very high so if you produce the ghee you will get the <coughs> very you can say the granular uh, appearance or textures of the, uh, the this jafarabadi uh, milk so that 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 also can be protected using the geographical indication then <coughs> woolen swell pasmina that you all know uh, then patanwadi sheep marwadi sheep the, the the wool is used for the carpet so uh, this is uh, by 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 these things uh, uh, or all such things can be protected using the what we can say the geographical indicans indication apart from this if you go to the agriculture then kesar mangoes then <coughs> we are having the uh, so that also you can protect with the help of the geographical indication so uh, santra from the you can say the maharashtra then ratnagiri hapus we are having thousands of the variety hmm? just now just before a uh, few months before the lockdown uh, there was a mango expo is to be held in the ahmedabad but because of the lockdown this was not global mango expo uh, expo <coughs> so we are having uh, that means what i want to say you that we are highly diversified people we our environment is highly, highly diversified our agriculture is highly, highly diversified that's why today we are sustaining today even in the uh, after lockdown of the two or three months somewhere 56 or 60 days still uh, we are able to sustain our life without any uh, you can see the problems or difficulty in getting the food because our country is very rich in the uh, foods and milk and butter and all these things so it's a fundamental things uh, we are producing so because of that reasons we are uh, enjoying the lockdown otherwise in certain countries the condition was very uh, you can see the painful if you go into the international news you will come to know people are moving here and there for food people are moving here and there for milk and all all these things small small kids <coughs> some small children are uh, without milk uh, since long so uh, that is the you can say beauty of the india and we are di diversity is helpful hmm? diversity is helpful in sustaining the uh, our culture and development so this is very important things <coughs> now patent law already madam has uh, discussed yesterday so i am not uh, going to discuss this what is the trips uh, already i have discussed now what are the different laws intellectual property rights in the uh, what you can say uh, in india so we are having the patent act 2005 we are having the trademark act 1999 design act 2000 copyright act 1957 geographical indication act 1999 then pp <coughs> protection of plant varieties and farmers right 2000 then Uh, biodiversity act 2002 <clears throat> so out of this uh, already uh, yesterday uh, dr tejal has uh, narrated on the patent act tomorrow we are having this uh, one more fellow he will discuss about the trademark act and copyright act uh, <clears throat> protection of plant variety we are having the general manager from the kushi rasan agro expert so he will discuss on the this protection of plant variety and farmers right act so uh, most of things we will cover in this way now next Uh, why patent act amended and all these things i think uh, yesterday madam has uh, given you some hints so still i want to discuss with you uh, because of the globalizations we have to become the members of the world trade organization in the 1993 and world trade organization emerged <coughs> and we become the member so uh, there was a uh, to comply with the you can say rules and regulations of the world trade organization we have to change the certain uh, you can say the uh, things with respect to the patent act with respect to intellectual property rights so we have made the amendment uh, three times in our patent act here you can see in the original act was uh, uh, was uh, developed in the 1970 <coughs> then uh, the first amendment was made in 1999 in response to the uh, we uh, as we become the signatories in the wto so there were so many changes we moved from pro process product to product product we started by giving the patent for the product as well as for the process uh, <clears throat> then second amendment was done in 2002 then third amendment was done in the 2006 so uh, this is what you can say the uh, 
genesis of the or changes made so that we are going to discuss in later parts of the uh, presentation now some of the patentable non patentable items yesterday madam has told as far as agriculture and uh, is concerned what cannot be patented the agriculture and horticultural processes uh, or pro pro product cannot be patented this is you, you mind well uh, this is very important thing you cannot protect any agriculture or horticultural pro product uh, you cannot uh, uh, have the patent for the processes of the medical surgical curative prophylactic or other treatment. means any kind of the treatment whether it is a medicinal treatment surgical treatment or curative treatment uh, cannot be uh, we cannot uh, you can say the protect then uh, third one is the plant <coughs> hello oh, yes the plants and uh, animal breeds cannot be patented now this is just to keep the balance between the uh, uh, you can say the human rights and intellectual property right because human rights says that every human has equal opportunity and rights to survive and sustain on this planet and intellectual property rights says that one should protect the intellectual property of inventor and creator so there is a fine and delicate balance between the human rights and intellectual property rights and to uh, you can say the observe this balance <coughs> the india has always you can say the uh, soft corner for the <coughs> you can say the socialism our our basic fundamental uh, aspect of our constitutions or our a uh, policy is always toward the socialist we are we are socialist in the approach so because of this reasons uh, we we are we have not allowed the uh, to do the patent in the field of the agricultures and horticultures crops we cannot patent the uh, the different kinds of the treatment plants and animal cannot be patented <coughs> then pharmaceutical products are currently not granted uh, patent production under indian law in case now the things has been changed this is a uh, older narratives uh, now product patent has been granted in the uh, pharmaceutical also uh, now go to the next uh, what kind of invention can be patented in the uh, you can say the veterinary medicine so new process of making active ingredient means anything if you are creating uh, so <coughs> new if you have invented the new drug if you have synthesized the new drugs uh, then you can patent it uh, new forms of the formulations or doses of that uh, doses from suppose somebody is using the insulin in the liquid and if you crystallize the insulin for the treatment of the diabetes then you can patent it insulin is already <coughs> patented but the, this is the different form of the insulin that can be uh, used in the treatment of the diabetes so new formulations new doses forms uh, can be patented the new use of the old active ingredient suppose <coughs> new use of the old anti active ingredient say for example we will take the example of the aspirin so when it was introduced uh, it was uh, you can say the ill reputed with the causing the uh, gastric hemorrhage and you can say the uh, thick, uh, thinning of the blood but right now we are using the aspirin in the patients of the uh, you can say the uh, patient whose blood is showing the higher level of the cholesterol there it produce or a patient who are uh, you can say susceptible to the <coughs> this intravascular blood clotting so the older molecules with newer use <coughs> so that can be protected then genes and markers of the genetic improvement can also be pat patented both in the animal as well as in the crop then uh, <coughs> method to measure the trait if you if you are having the some distinct method to measure the uh, genetic traits or phenotypic trait then uh, that can also be uh, patented so in this way uh, this is you can see the broader outlook i am not going into the details because time is running out uh, these are the you can see the things which can be patented and not patented so that you go through i will put this presentation into the our google classroom now this is important thing now what is the emerging trend in the intellectual property that is very important to understand especially in the last decade <laughs> there is a lot of change there is a 360 degree change in the trends of the intellectual property rights in the india and <clears throat> this changes has brought the you can say the uh, the transformations so that's why the last decade is considered as the decades of the changes and transformation and because of that transformations and changes in the intellectual property rights in the policies in the acts in the laws or in the you can say the legal uh, framework or administrative from framework uh, because of all this co collective efforts it is we are able to produce the uh, healthy fertile land for the in innovators and researchers so it is evident now in the india 
that there are lot many startups, there are lot many innovators, they are putting, they are investing in the India. Uh, why? Because we have changed our uh, entire IP or intellectual property rights regimes or intel, intellectual property rights in such a way that it, we, we put it, uh, we converted this IP in, uh, into the innovator friendly. So because of this reason, uh, now India is considered a healthy fertile land for the innovators and researchers. Uh, and because of these changes and because of this interest of the innovators and researchers, uh, now the things is has been changed, our morals uh, boosted or you can say it had, the, the environment has boosted the morals of the knowledge based entrepreneurs and innovators. So this is the you can say the emerging trend uh, in the India. Now let's see what are the what things have been changed in the last few years. In the 2012, the first amendment made in the Indian copyright law compliant with the internet treaties and world intellectual property organization. So that is the in the first thing. Then second thing, copyright treaty, <coughs> world copyright treaty and VPO, that is world intellectual property organization performance and phonogram treaty uh, was also changed or we, we become or, uh, our uh, rules or copyright act was modified or it, 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 it made uh, uh, you can see the change has been made in compliance to the WTCT and VPO performance and phonogram treaty. Then another thing is the comprehensive process of filing the intellectual property has been revised and changed entire old structure was removed newer structure with newer technology like facility of the online filing, online tracking, online responding has been started in the India and because of this now the filing the patent is very easy. Otherwise in earlier time it was very much complicated to file the patent. So these are the changes which is taking place in the since last 10 years and <coughs> in the year 2012 we also become the 90th member of the Madrid system. It's an international system, Madrid system, international system for protecting the uh, you can see the your uh, <coughs> trademarks in the uh, multi-level uh, or multi-jurisdictions or global jurisdiction. You can protect your trademark in the different different countries <coughs> for the in the different parts of the world. So that is the Madrid system. And then uh, in the October 15, that is in 2013, another uh, important things happened that India started working at the International Search Authority and International Preliminary examining authority. This is very good. Uh, you can say the honor for the country that in the, in the year of the 2030, India is recognized or India started the International Search Authority and International Prelim, uh, Preliminary Examination Authority for the patent. Now, this is something, it is, uh, some uh, act is there in the WTO. The, I think it is 16D. Uh, <coughs> if someone files the uh, applications for the patents and some uh, objection is raised, then India <coughs> can be the members of the global team for searching as well as for the you can say the examining the that particular inventions or patents so that is uh, you can say very good thing if you go into the website of the vipo world intellectual property organization you will find the uh, indian patent office uh, as a member of the international search authority and international preliminary examination authority so that is the very important change we are <coughs> our, our, our our you can say the experts were exposed to the global patenting system global intellectual property rights management systems and the transfer of the knowledge is very important from uh, uh, for our uh, countries now another thing is the step towards the Another thing is the step towards the uh, setting the place in the league of the one of the best uh, IP office in the world. Now you see in the 2030, the government had decided that our IP office should be changed to the uh, innovator friendly. There we should remove all the hoops and crooks from a filing process or we want to remove or <coughs> they removed the you can say the excess uh, red tape them and all these things. So uh, all the entire process was made online. You can file the uh, uh, applications for the patent. You can uh, you can say the track your applications. You can respond your query. So uh, because of in technological innovations and adoption, uh, the process of filing has been revised. Entire legal structure, administrative structures in the uh, of the, in the Indian Patent Office has been revised. <coughs> you can approach the office very easily. You can approach the uh, you can say the. Uh, uh, the consult uh, this expert in the IP office very easily. 
so uh, that is also very good change in the uh, year 2013 now <clears throat> these changes especially what we we have discussed in the 2020 and 13 uh, this was the effort <coughs> and uh, that is uh, you can say the change in the procedural front hmm? by 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 uh, this change is the procedure to file the, the patent become easy so that is the procedural front that is not the policy changes policy remains same but you have is <coughs> you have uh, is the process of filing the patent but <clears throat> because uh, though whatever it may be uh, it has impacted a lot in shifting the indian ip uh, indian ip regime towards the global standard so because of this changing our <coughs> focus was shifted uh, towards the global standard otherwise in before 2012 or 13 or even before 2010 uh, we are not bother for the innovations technology transfers then protection of the intellectual property right but because of this changes <coughs> our standard our focus shifted from local to global so that is the advantage then uh, next one now in the 2014 to 16 Uh, you can say that there is the uh, there is the integrated development of the intellectual property and business laws in the india so after 2013 so in the year of the 2014 15 16 the government has made uh, so many changes in the uh, you can say the ip regimes and the business laws in the india uh, government has <coughs> adopted the national intellectual property uh, rights policy in the 2016 then unique business attitude or unique business you can say aggressive business strategy <coughs> in the year of 2016 or for, in between the 2014 and 16 aggressive business strategies with launching the campaign like make in india startup india digital india skill india stand up india so what is this this is nothing but the <coughs> to provide the you can say the uh, uh, administrative support as well as financial support as well as social support to the potential market uh, innovators to the potential market contributors to the potential skill builders <coughs> uh, so that our local generations of the intellectual uh, property will get enhanced it, uh, and that will contribute to the economic growth and welfare of the people of the india so that is the because the biggest change in the attitude or that is the aggressive business strategies to make the india self reliant in generations in protections of the intellectual property that is required at local as well as the global level so that is also very important <coughs> changes made sorry i am running out of time for few minutes but uh, anyway so this is you can say the major objective of all these changes is just to make the india just to start the india to produce something uh, which is accepted globally just to uh, you can say the uh, increase the skill of the indian population that is kaushal bharat then <coughs> to start or to start to, to to start the new business to new manufacturing new idea so the major objective or, or major focus to bring all these changes in the national intellectual property right policy <coughs> is to focus on make in india skill india startup india so uh, that is uh, you can say the <coughs> our major uh, lookout for the our country especially when we are thinking about uh, to making this country a self reliant now if you go to the 2016 uh, the new intellectual property right policy was adopted and uh, you can say the, the implementations of this new policy the awareness about intellectual property right then uh, you can say the promotions of the uh, patent or other intellectual filing of the intellectual property right uh, through helping through assistance then uh, you, you support the inventors with a platform <coughs> so that they can commercialize their product in entire india so this was the major focus of the new intellectual property uh, policy <coughs> and the most important thing is that the establishment of the cpam that is center for intellectual promotions and management was created in the year 2016 so this is even the major changes major focus on the intellectual property right uh, now just a bit let me uh, <coughs> now in the 2018 just before two years what what changes what trends emerged in the india that the government of india through an ordinance they amended the commercial court and commercial divisions and commercial appellate divisions of the high court act 
so that means it is not related to the agriculture and veterinary sector but simply you try to uh, <coughs> understand that uh, there is a separate courts <coughs> with the uh, you can say the for the uh, to settle the dispute of the intellectual property and commercial dispute has been started or uh, the act for may made to uh, to uh, provide this kind of the facilities in the indian environment so this was a considered as a bold step with an aim to improve the india's ranking on the ease of doing business so otherwise <coughs> you, you, we know that there is a lot many pendency in the court uh, and it will take uh, you can say the years together for decisions or for uh, you can say the justice <coughs> so gov what government had they have passed the one ordinance and that ordinance had provided uh, the scope of the commercial court in the india and they have separated the court with the courts <coughs> with the different procedure for resolving all commercial ip disputes so that is also you can say the very uh, effective changes uh, what we can consider now uh, in line with this uh, idea of the nurturing the innovations and startup again government come up in the 2019 just before one year you might be able to remember that national innovations and startup policy was laid and it was made effective why it was laid and why it was made effective just for the students and faculty of the higher educations and institutions uh, can participate in the research they can start up they can build the skill <coughs> they can start producing the new things they can innovate the new things they can commercialize the new thing for that purpose to create the environment uh, this national innovations and startup policy was started in 2019 so if you look to the uh, uh, this things now the shifting of the objective of the, the emerging trends in the Uh, with respect to the intellectual property rights in the india uh, that is uh, the just before 2013 and 14 the changes were made and that was focused on to make the indian uh, rules and regulation and act and laws compliant to the global regime that is because we have entered the uh, in the era of the wto we have entered the in the era of the uh, trade so to com comply with all this uh, you can say the global changes <coughs> the changes were made just before 2013 and 14 that focused to give the affirmations our uh, commitment <coughs> of india towards the global ip uh, changes or global intellectual property regime management changes <coughs> but after 2013 whatever changes we have made uh, that is to facilitate the growth and proliferation of the indian ip system that to sustain to support the innovations to support the uh, startup to support the technology generation to support the commercialization of the technology to support the transfer of the technology A lot of change has been made uh, after the uh, 2013 and 14 so now what is the result of this train uh, what 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 is the benefits of the uh, you can say the uh, this uh, <coughs> changes and transformation let's see uh, you can see the broader outlook on uh, this impact of the this changes now uh, before the national intellectual property po uh, po intellectual ipr policy that was laid in the 1960 so <coughs> with the, uh, you can see the benefit of the ipr in the creativity and innovation uh, and you can see that this policy is a real uh, india or advancement of the india towards the new global pace of the uh, you can see the innovations or we are marching towards the uh, race of the innovations and technology transfer at global pace so that is the advantage of the national ipr policy then another <coughs> objective is to stimulate the forced, uh, or uh, or to foster the creativity and innovations in the uh, you can say the young populations of the india so by laying the this ipr policy government uh, was uh, government uh, and we says that uh, this policy should able to increase or able to stimulate the creativity and innovations in the among the uh, this innovating innovators then just to promote or to increase the entrepreneurship and enhance the socio economics and cultural development so that is also the one important focus now the major objective of the this uh, ipr policy national ipr policy 2016 is to bring the ipr awareness through the outreach and promotion so there are lot of seminars workshop is being held or organized <coughs> by this uh, councils of the uh, many governments and uh, you can say the non government organizations just to bring the awareness in the field of the intellectual property rights then uh, there is a you can say the, the the means to promote to increase the generations of the intellectual property rights then legal uh, this policy is aimed to provide the legal and legislative framework to facilitate the <coughs> 
filings of the patents or filings of the intellectual property rights and other processes. And there is a change in the administrative and management of the intellectual property rights. There is a change in the administrative framework uh, throughout the country so that any innovators, uh, any contributors or any creators or any uh, technology uh, developer can approach the uh, administrative system with ease uh, without any red tapism. Then they have also uh, stimulated or they have also promoted the commercialization of the technology. If you are generating the technology, you approach the government, government will manage to commercialize your technology on behalf of you and you will get the royalty. So to that extent, government is willing to help you to bring your technology in the market. So that is the advantage of this new policy. Uh, then enforcement and adjudication is also uh, always there whenever you are doing some new business or new technology transfer. So you have to enforce the certain rules and regulations. You have to adhere to the rules and regulations of particular jurisdiction. So, and human capital development is another advantage, advantage uh, of this new uh, policy. Now, uh, establishment of the uh, this cell for IPR promotion and management at central level and at state level is very important facet or part of this new IPR policy for different uh, <coughs> purposes. Then uh, you can see the national innovations and uh, startup policy was also laid down in the 2019. Our speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, I think, uh, I forgot the Saurabh Dave, he is the Dean of Startup and Innovation uh, at Ganpat University. He will uh, discuss uh, this innovations and startup policy in, in depth uh, technology transfer in, in coming time. So I will skip this part. So the changes and prospects. Now let us let's try to summarize what we have changed <coughs> and what we are now uh, seeing the impact of that changes. So we have started the uh, this national uh, IPR policy. Then we have national innovations and startup policy. Then we have the startup India. Then we have the make make in India, skill India, and CPM. So this is the you can say the the change in the intellectual property rights and its management at national levels and its outcome. So uh, this is very important and uh, this is you can say the uh, with these changes in the last few years especially in the uh, after uh, 2014 what is the impact of all these changes on the intellectual property now you can see the patent in the 2013-14 uh, number of patent was uh, uh, somewhat like here and it, it, it increased in the 2018 uh, 19 to this extent still it is incre incremented not uh, you can say the uh, it does, does not deserve the appreciation, but still there is a, uh, you can say the positive growth. Similarly, if you go into this, uh, uh, the pattern in the 2013-14, there are 42,950 uh, patterns uh, that increased to the 50,667 in the 2018-19. So everywhere you will find the positive growth because of these changes in the intellectual property rights. So this is recent trends in the uh, or supports of the uh, transformations in the legal frameworks and all these things. So this is again state, state, uh, the, uh, figures which represent the growth in the ease of doing business. Earlier we stood at 142 place uh, in the ease of doing business. Now we are at the 63 uh, places. So we have migrated to great extent. So that is also the achievement for the India. Then if you go into the global innovation index again uh, in 2015 we we were at 80 uh, first position today in 2019 we are at 52nd position so that is also very good appreciation so now the conclusion so what uh, how we can conclude today's uh, talk so we are at least attempting to find the ways to regain the glory you see our country was very much uh, bright if you go to the history we have so many things <coughs> we uh, we attracted the people from all over the world uh, for the trading and we also used to go for the trading <coughs> so we have lost that glory but now it's time now since a few uh, last 10 years we are feeling that we are able to find we are able to regain our glory the lost glory since last past 70 years then now India has access to many opportunity and available resource. Now the government is friendly, uh, then environment is generated, young people are very responsive, young innovators are coming into the market, they are able to uh, take the risk, their risk appetite is very high. So because of all these things, uh, India is now become the land of the opportunities and resources for innovators and creators, contributors, developers of the new technology or new technocrats. Uh, but this is not the end of the story. We should not stop. Still, we are far behind uh, uh, if you compare our IP regime with the China and Singapore.
the people have done ex excessively or you can say the excellently or exceptionally uh, excellent work <coughs> uh, in the uh, intellectual property rights or in the ip regime in so it is not the full stop <coughs> the, some procedural changes in the ip regime in some uh, policy ch level changes in the ip regime in is not the end of the story still we need to do something <coughs> more so we need to we, we we need to respond to the some uh, global changes so that we can exploit and we can continue uh, you can say the our journey towards the uh, full potential in terms of the effective utilizations of our indigenous intellectual we are highly intellectual you see the software industry in this world is entirely reliable on the uh, indian brain but uh, <coughs> the people migrate from here to there why because we are lacking the legal uh, indigenous uh, intellectual uh, property rights frameworks environment for the incubators environment for the innovator so there are lot many things need to be done we have to exploit this <coughs> brain drain we have to stop this brain drain we have to give more innovator friendly environment we have to uh, uh, write the more innovator friendly policies we have to bring more innovator friendly administrative changes proactive <coughs> governance then and then we can able to uh, <coughs> realize the fruits of this all the intellectual property rights now if you do this then we will be the most fertile land deliberately or otherwise and to reap the best harvest a path of innovations and restructuring must be identified and pursued so uh, this is uh, you can say the all about today's lecture i am very much sorry uh, that i have taken much time uh, than the designated time but anyway uh, i hope that uh, i am able to uh, convince you uh, to great extent if you are having any questions then uh, you can uh, ask the question one by one mm, and i am very much thankful to 173 people who are listening me